Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It's Saturday, December 4th, 2021. I am Andrew Hansen alongside Josh Crash Davis, ready for the week 13 primetime NFL slate. And interesting pair of games here, Crash. We've got Denver, the city, and then we've got New England in Buffalo Monday night with some weather, potentially some wind, with some strong defenses on both sides. Yeah. So let's get break this down. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you hear Kansas City and Denver and New England and Buffalo, and you think about these exciting fantasy matchups and everything, but really it could be the defense that's a story in all these games. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to break it down, though, and, and uh, evaluate it, get you ready for DraftKings and FanDuel. As usual here on Saturday night, we don't have pricing for the Monday night showdowns, but we're going to um, – get you ready position by position, which is kind of, it can be useful and helpful to mm -hmm. not even look at the prices um, as you break down the games, figure out the areas you want to attack, and then you fine tune it when you see the pricing. So we'll get, we'll do that for game two. But first we have Denver and Kansas city, the Sunday night game at eight twenty Eastern uh, total here, 47 KC favored by nine and a half. Um, Denver coming off a nice win over the Chargers. And the big news here, of course, Melvin Gordon is officially out. So it's Javante mm -hmm. Williams time. We didn't even have to discuss it uh, with okay. Omaha Joe, the, the thumb. I mean, there was no doubt about, uh, about that. So everybody out in the, the Midwest, uh, I guess, west of Kansas City is, is fired up for, for Williams. Uh, no more timeshare, at least for, for one week. So... Williams is the, is the story, and I do want to play him here because I just don't trust the rest of that offense. And he's been strong this year, even in nearly a 50-50 timeshare. Mm -hmm. If you break down the numbers, uh, KC's been, you know, basically average against the run. Um, it depends on what stat you look at. They've given up the 13th fewest fantasy points overall. And no touchdowns since week four. Hmm. So it's been it's been tough to get in the end zone against them, but you can you can pick up the yardage. PFF gives Denver an 18% run blocking advantage here. So I think you know Williams is gonna get probably 25 touches or more. And uh, I think you've got to have him out there because he's not priced like an ultra bell cow here. He's 7,600. Right. On DraftKings 10-5 on FanDuel. Is he going to be locked in for you as well, Crash? Yeah, I think, you know, I'm probably going to have to obviously play at least one Bronco, and he's probably going to be the main guy for me. Um, with him getting out of that that share carry load between him and Gordon, you know, that's going to open up a lot of opportunities for him, hopefully. So he's shown some potential um in limited in limited reps so with him getting the full workload that that should open it up pretty pretty big for him right now if he can't get every touch then it looks like Mike Boone is going to step in as the backup mm -hmm. he has not had any carries this year he does have one reception for 3 yards <laughs> but historically he's he's been pretty solid up in Minnesota he averaged 5.3 yards per carry for his career Mm -hmm. or rushing touchdowns as a backup. So you could mix him into the lineup. He's minimum price on both sites. And I do want to mention, by the way, Javante Williams, 4.9 yards per carry on the season. Mm -hmm. So he's just been tremendous when he gets the touches. So you give him 20-plus uh, carries, I, I think he could go for 100-plus. Yeah. Now, with the passing game, you know, it's decent uh, for quarterbacks this season against KC. Seventh most fantasy points allowed. But Teddy Bridgewater, we know, is not a big, high volume, high score. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think you need to go there. I'd probably rather go with the quarterback on the other side if you can afford him. <laughs> uh, and with the pass catchers here, again, kind of an average matchup to wide receivers. Um, but the volume for these Denver wide receivers has been very, very meager lately. Mm -hmm. um, just not anything to get excited about whatsoever. Judy, you know, he's had a couple games where he's been more heavily targeted. Yeah. He could, he could get you five or six catches. But, man, these games with Sutton and Patrick where they get two or three catches is just not going to get it done. 
I think, <clears throat> believe it or not, you know, matchup wise, if I had to pick somebody, it would be Sutton on the outside, and and you hope for a touchdown. But the matchup ratings on Pro Football Focus, you know, the mm-hmm. best one is only thirty nine wow. for Patrick. Um, so uh, just not excited there. And then with tight ends, you know, it's a glimmer of hope here as they've given up the seventh most fancy points to tight ends. Mm-hmm. But Fant and Albert O are almost in a timeshare like those running backs have been in. Yeah. So do you want to pay up for Fant? Um, I don't know. I don't I don't feel great about it because Albert O could easily get in the end zone instead of him. Um, and, and so the other reason I, I'm kind of interested in this position is because since week four, Kansas City has given up five touchdowns to tight ends. Mm-hmm. So that's been the way to get in the end zone. It hasn't been on the ground. Um, but just tough to pick. You know, if you have to pick one of them, who's going to get it done? Yeah. Are you are you looking at any of the kicker, the kicker for Denver by chance? Or yeah, possibly. Um, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, McManus is four thousand. He's been good. So I, I wouldn't mind going on on DraftKings with Javante Williams and McManus. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd probably feel a little bit better about his points than than the tight ends. Right. We're just going to think of a of a cash lineup. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's going to be pretty pretty solid. Um, Dallas, you know, they only got three field goals against Kansas City, so could see something like that happening with Denver for sure. Yeah, and that actually would be a nice combo because if Williams, we know he's going to put up points. He's yeah. going to get yards. He'll get some catches. But if he doesn't score, then McManus might uh, be a nice correlation there with Williams. Yeah, good game script. <clears throat> All right, anything else for you on Denver, or do you want to start on Kansas City for us? I think that's about it um, for Denver. You know, Patrick Mahomes, obviously you mentioned him. He's 18-6 in the captain spot, 12-4 in the flex. So he's really expensive, of course. But he, um, you know, he only got two touchdowns combined in his last, you know, two games against Denver last year. And so it's a little bit uh, of a risky play. Um, Denver's allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. And I, I kind of want to lean towards possibly pairing up Kelsey and Hill. I know we don't normally do that, but um, instead of spending all that salary on Mahomes, I think I'm going to split it up between those two. And it's just my thoughts initially. Yeah, and you know, can be site dependent, but it's kind of a a good cash approach if you can work it out um, because you you kind of feel like you're getting a, a major chunk of that mm-hmm. offense if you get yeah. all the catches that those guys get. Right. So I, I don't blame you there. I, I do kind of like the, the matchup for, for Hill here because these outside receivers with big play potential have had good games against Denver this year. Claypool did it. Ruggs had one of his bigger games, Marquise Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tyreek is, you know, if I had to pick yeah. one out of Tyreek or Kelsey this week, I'm leaning Tyreek. Yeah, and they're and they're closer to the middle range uh, in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. Denver is their thirteenth, so that's probably the most favorable matchup of any position um, in this game for Kansas City. In their last two matchups, um, Hill had you know ten and eleven targets, so he saw double digit targets in both games. Had six catches for fifty eight, six for fifty five, and a touchdown. So not huge numbers, but solid numbers. And then Kelsey, um, in their last game, he had a pretty monster game. He had eight catches for 136 and a touchdown on 12 targets. So Kelsey's definitely in play for me. Um, Denver has allowed the fifth fewest fantasy points to tight end, so that's a little bit of a concern. But as we mentioned on previous podcasts, he has scored five of his six touchdowns this season at home at Arrowhead. So definitely likes to find the end zone at home. And before I forget, I do also like that KC is coming off a bye, mm, so they're yeah. going to be rested. The whole offense is in a better spot because of that. Now, what about any other pass catchers or uh, either of these running backs? Yeah, I'm I'm not really looking at this running game. Clyde Edwards-Alaire is questionable. I forgot to mention that, but he is questionable, so that's, that's a possibility of going to Daryl Williams. Um, Denver's allowed the ninth fewest fantasy points to running back, so they've been pretty stout. I think they'll probably just, you know, do what they can to slow down the, the running game at least um, and, and give up, you know, whatever that happens with 
the passing game. Um, I think they'll have to just deal with it because you can't slow down everybody. So um, I think that Daryl Williams will be held in check a little bit. And then for me, I'm, I'm leaning heavily towards the Kansas City defense in this game. Um, they're 6,600 in the captain spot, 4,400 in the flex. They've been playing very well of late. They've allowed 9, 14, and 7 points to uh, Dallas the Raiders and the Packers. Uh, so, you know, they've Denver's been a little bit of below average offense this year. Uh, ranked 19th in scoring, allowing or scoring 20.7 points per game. So I think that Kansas City's defense is is going to give Denver a lot of trouble in this game. And outside of the running game, as we mentioned, they may give up a few field goals, but I don't see a lot of touchdowns for for Denver in this game. Okay, yeah. KC defense playable for me as well. I'll follow up on those running backs. CEH really took back that lead role uh, against Dallas with 12 carries, a couple of catches. Darrell Williams only had five carries and one catch. If CEH is out, what it sounds like flu-like symptoms where he's probably going to play. But if for some reason he doesn't, then Williams is very appealing to me because he's so cheap. He's no longer priced as as the lead back. Mm. But assuming CEH plays, then I, I very well will also fade that backfield. And then I do want to mention with those receivers that uh, Byron Pringle has been ascending with his snap share. 66% yeah. of the snaps against Dallas. Nicole Hardman fell to 17%. He hmm. did have one more catch than Pringle, but Pringle's only 1,800 on DraftKings, Hardman 48. And this is a week where if you want to uh, hit that part of the roster, I would go Pringle over Hardman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Harrison Bucker also in play for me as a kicker. So both kickers in play in this game, honestly. Yeah. All right, great. Well, before we hit game two, uh, join us this weekend if you'd like, dfscoachtalk.com. Sign up on our website. We will invite you into our Discord, give you out the full lineups on FanDuel and Yahoo, cash lineups and GPP that you can plug in, and then the core plays on DraftKings for your GPP and hybrid builds. We've had a great season on these showdowns. So come join the family this weekend if you'd like. And when you sign up, of course, you get all of our sports so you get all of our uh, NBA lineups seven days a week. Yeah. All right, game two, Monday night. What a matchup here with New England and Buffalo. Eight and four against seven and four with two mm -hmm. outstanding defenses. And possibly some weather here. Uh, could be quite windy. And the total is only 41 and a half. Buffalo favored by two and a half. And... Just as an overview of the game here, Crash, these defenses, man, you talk about stout. Both of them uh, to the opposing quarterbacks, top two. We've got mm -hmm. the two best defenses against quarterbacks, two of the top four against wide receivers, uh, tight ends, two of the top five. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe there's a little, a little something for the running backs. Right. So, man, it's going to be a really different game and slate than usual. Mm -hmm. And again, the pricing is not out yet, but this could be a situation where you really leave some money on the table. If you go heavy with running backs, defenses, potentially. Um, so keep that in mind, but let's, let's go as we always do here with the visitors first. And I've got new England this week. So uh, I'll start there coming off another strong win uh, over Tennessee and um, the thing here with with New England here is, is if, if we do want to look at the running game, obviously it's become a bit more of a timeshare here with Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're both in play. We'll see what the pricing is like. Uh, very close to even in my mind. Harris uh, got the touchdown last week, but again, almost an even split on carries. They both got one target. And then Brandon Bolden had uh, – he's the key pass catcher there. Yeah. Caught another four balls last week. But, you know, e even though this is uh, the seventh fewest running back – seventh fewest fantasy points to running backs, that's the best matchup that New England has. <laughs> right. Uh, and actually, according to our friends at Pro Football Focus, they have a 47% run blocking advantage. Hmm. So uh, I think that's the best – uh, 
best prediction you can make for New England's strategy is that they're going to take uh, take advantage of of one of their strengths. Mm-hmm. And even though Buffalo has been awesome against the run, uh, we do know that they've had a couple of big games uh, given up to teams and running backs that are outstanding. Yeah, Derek, Derek Henry had the big game, 143 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah. Of course, Jonathan Taylor had that enormous game, 185 on the ground, four rushing scores, caught one as well. So I think that's um, what Bill will try to do is mm-hmm. run it, uh, keep the ball, uh, take care of it, win the t- win the turnover battle, and uh, try to try to you know eke out a victory. So yeah. you could look at those running backs with the passing game. Really, not much to get you know, thrilled about here with these conditions, the defense, Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mac Jones really settling in very strong last week against Tennessee, over 300 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, but don't look for a ceiling game this week. (laughs) Um, the, the maximum yardage that Buffalo has given up to a quarterback in passing this year, only 272. And that Mm -hmm. was Patrick Mahomes. They've kept opposing quarterbacks under 200 yards five times hmm. uh, out of the 11 games. So don't look for high fi- high numbers there. It, it may not be worth it to invest in Mac Jones. And then with the receivers, um, just sort of middle-of-the-road matchup ratings on PFF. Um, you know, Jacoby Myers, I think, is the most trustworthy in a potentially short-passing night with the weather conditions. Mm-hmm. Um, you could look at one of the tight ends, but again, uh, they're top five in, in that department defensively as well. Uh, John, who had one more catch last week in that revenge game, but, uh, Hunter Henry still out targeted him five to four. Yeah. Um, and then the kicker, Nick Folk, a little bit limited this week in practice with the knee issue. Uh, but assuming he's good to go, he's going to be in play for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be a battle here. Um, anything jump out at you here on the New England side? Yeah, I mean, I think that you you kind of hit the nail on the head with the running game. I think the running game is going to be the key for both teams in this game. I mean, even if the weather was nice, it would still be, you know, a pretty run-heavy game in my opinion because these passing defenses are so strong. So when you consider the weather on top of it, there's just, there's just no way I want to go into the passing game for either team. Okay, beautiful. Well, uh, talk to us about this Buffalo side at home. Big game here in the AFC East. Yep, yep. I'm thinking that, you know, Josh Allen, you know, he's he's facing the New England defense. It's allowed the second fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. And as you mentioned, they've uh, New England has allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. So once again, looking at the running game here um, with the recently uh, designated full-time running back to be Matt Breda, um, you know, I think we're going to look in his direction here. New England has allowed the 18th most fantasy points to running back. So if they've had a weakness, that's been it. Um, just last week, Dontrell Hilliard had 12 carries for 131 yards and a touchdown. And Dante Foreman had 19 carries for 109 yards. And I don't think either one of those running backs are as skilled as, as Matt Breda or as fast either. So um, definitely like like Matt Breda in this conditions and and the, just the whole game script and everything is, is lining up in his favor for me. And um, Dawson Knox, you could look at, you know, as a, as an option in the red zone, um, just in case, you know, New England stiffens against the run a little bit, you know, you could see him being targeted uh, possibly, but really I just want to look at the running game and, and the bills defense. Um, they have allowed the fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks, fifth fewest to running backs, fewest to wide receivers and six fewest to tight ends. So, not a lot of fantasy points are given up. So I think both defenses are in play for me and, and both running backs in both games in both sides of me. Yeah. You know, I was, I was looking at Buffalo's numbers and then glanced back at their record. I was kind of surprising that they're seven and four with those defensive yeah. numbers. Yeah. So I had to look back and remember they had that close loss to Tennessee when Derrick Henry had the big game, they lost 34, 31. Mm-hmm. Really their only, their only stinker was Indianapolis with Taylor, yeah. they beat him 41 to 15. But other than that, they had that nine to six loss to Jacksonville <laughs> and the week one loss to Pittsburgh, 23, 16. Right. So man, um, 
it's just going to be such such a war here for these teams fighting for the AFC East lead. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I'll echo what you said and just, you know, the other thing about this passing attack for Buffalo uh, with New England's defense is lately they have really clamped down on the quarterbacks. The last four games, opposing quarterbacks have only averaged 143 passing yards per game. Mm. So just not thrilled there. Yeah. Um, Stephon Diggs does have a the best matchup of any pass catcher uh, in terms of his rating on on PFF. But it's you know to follow up on on the running backs that has been the the weakness if there has been one lately for New England. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Tennessee, Cleveland had success running against them as well. Right. Uh, a couple weeks back, uh, we won't count Atlanta in between because you know they shut him out. Right. And, uh, they didn't do much, but yeah, they can certainly get some some um, some work done there. And and Devin Singletary, um, you know, if they have the same setup as uh, last week with Moss inactive, mm-hmm. uh, he got he did get 15 carries against New Orleans, so he could get enough volume uh, to be in the mix as well. Yeah, and the other thing about that Atlanta game that you mentioned is that Cordell Patterson was out that game, so that made a big difference too. Yep. He's been their top back. Yeah. All right, so there it is, uh, a tale of two different games, uh, but really intriguing matchups mm-hmm. and slates. So, again, join us if you want those final lineups, especially for New England and Buffalo, since the pricing isn't out yet. Uh, we'll give you our final analysis in Discord. Uh, and see if we can make this a big week 13. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Do hit that like button if you don't mind on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll be back next week to cover all the slates as well. And we've got NBA rolling along seven days a week. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of Josh Crash Davis and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. We'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.